Hey there, farm friends. I'm on vacation here in beautiful Winthrop, Washington, and I thought maybe I'd throw together a couple of videos and make kind of a series, per se, of things that I have on the farm that I consider important to have on hand in case of maybe like emergencies or things like that. So I'm going to break it down into different species and I'm going to start with goats, goats and sheep, because basically they're considered almost the same species, even though they are very, very different. But, um, so what I would start with would be um, fluids and an IV set or minimally a 60 cc syringe for putting fluids into the animal because dehydration happens fairly frequently and easily with down sheep and goats. Um, I like to have on hand some ringer's lactate, but that's hard to get these days. So in a pinch, you can always use saline as well. And you can pick, a lot of times pick those things up, but not the ringers, you gotta get that at the vet, but the, the saline you can get at a, at a um, feed store. You can also make your own. There's recipes out there though. I get stuff that's been outdated um, from the medical industry and that works pretty good for me. Um, uh, the IV set would be something that you could actually do like a direct IV into the jugular of a goat or sheep, but that's kind of tricky too because you can't go too fast with it. You need to let it happen slowly and the animal needs to be pretty darn sick to do that. Otherwise they're moving around and pulling it out. So generally I use a 60 cc syringe. I, you know, draw up the fluid and I just bubble it underneath the skin and a sub Q. That works really well. It's kind of a slow release. Unless the animal's severely dehydrated, like you find it out in the sun and it's been there all day dehydrated. Most of our animals that we're going to see are just doing poorly and their eyes are starting to sink because they aren't drinking, they're not eating. And just a little bit of uh, fluid therapy can really turn them around and kind of get them going the right direction. Another thing I would have on the farm um, would be needles and syringes. And for goats and sheep, I usually go with like a 20 gauge to 18 gauge uh, needle. And I like to have a variety of syringes, 3cc, 6cc, and 12cc, um, because that way I can do, you know, most vaccines are 2ccs or less. Um, if I'm going to give like a antibiotic, I'm going to need something like 6ccs and maybe even bigger. So some, you know, a variety of, of syringes would be nice to have. Uh, another thing I like to have on hand is suturing supplies. For instance, um, I do keep two different types of suture and uh, suture needles. One is um, like a cat gut that can be absorbed and the other is one that needs to be cut and removed after two weeks and I like to keep um, half moon syringes you know where you put the, the suture through this end and this is the pointy end because you can use that to really scoop and like gather skin together and scoop through that to, to make a nice suture there and bring the edges back together. Um, another thing I will not be without on my farm is suture stapler. Um, I love those things, skin staplers. They're just so fast and easy. You basically set it up against the skin, pull the two pieces of skin together and just go ka -chook, ka -chook, ka -chook. done. It's fast. It doesn't really hurt that much. It's not very stressful for the animal. Um, and I've had really good luck with those. So that's another thing I would definitely have on the farm. Uh, next item would be scalpel or scissors, something very sharp to remove tags of uh, messed up skin, dirty skin, um, just yucky wool, just to get into where you need to work to clear the edges, to clean the edges on a, on a wound. So that you can suture it together. Um, some of times the wounds will be really filthy and dirty and it'd be nice to be able to like kind of pull that up and kind of cut it away so that you're not trying to suture mud and dirt into a wound. You don't want to do that. The next thing for goats and sheep that I would have on hand would be hoof trimmers. Um, lameness pops up all the time. You know oftentimes it's hoof rot something like that where you're going to need some kind of a, a hoof rot treatment. I like to use hoof and heel. I think it's Dr. Naylor's that works really good on our farm, but you know, every farm has its own type of bacteria that's in the, in the soil. Um, so some kind of hoof rot shears to like clear away the long hoof and make it easier to see what's going on. That'd be a good idea. Of course, restraint. Restraint's super important. You can't treat an animal that won't sit still, right? So with a goat and a sheep, you can use a collar, halter, lead rope. Um, you can use a stanchion. Stanchions are perfect if you're just trying to do stuff on your own. Having a halter and a lead rope, you can secure the animal to a fence or a tree. That works okay too. Um, but a stanchion's perfect because it just locks them in there and you can just sit next to them and treat what you need to treat. Uh, as far as injectables go, I always have vitamin B on hand. That works great for increasing appetite. You can't overdose it really. It's a safe one to use twice a day. Um, if any animal that's showing some kind of uh, uninterest in food, I would definitely go vitamin B. And in the vitamin B, you know, category would be thiamine. 
thiamine for goats especially is good to have on hand because uh, when their rumen stops functioning properly, they stop making vitamin B and especially thiamine. And that can start a whole slew of metabolic events that can kill the goat. So vitamin B for sure, thiamine would be a good one to have. Antibiotics, um, I usually keep some on hand just in case, especially for like metritis, um, maybe mastitis with really the goal being just get the animal through the event so that we can eat it, you know, maybe three months later. And then um, CD and T vaccine for clostridium perfringens type CD and tetanus. Those vaccines I like to do. I don't, not a big vaccine person. I don't generally vaccinate my animals, but for show goats and, you know, show lambs that are being raised with a high amount of concentrates and, you know, maybe not a whole lot of roughages, giving them their CDT shots when they're, you know, at the right ages could be a lifesaver if you're going to be really pushing food to them. Next, we'll move on to wound care because Lord knows no matter how good you try to keep their pens clean, they're going to find that tiny piece of sheet metal and jab it into themselves, right? So the next thing I would be, you know, have on hand would be like, I like personally, I like blue coat. Um, it stains everything purple, but at least I know that it's been put on the wound and when it starts to wear off, I can see that it's getting light and I can reapply it if I need to. Uh, I love chlorhexidine as a scrub. Um, we use that for uh, flushing wounds and, you know, flush, cleaning our hands first before we go and touch something that's, you know, maybe like a metritis type thing where maybe we're going in to check to see if there's more lambs or kids inside of you, um, you know, to make sure our hands are somewhat sterile and clean. Another thing I would have on hand all the time is a lice treatment. Goats get lice, even if there's one goat all by itself and you treat it every year, somehow it ends up with lice again. So lice treatment. I like sulfur paste. Sulfur paste works great for mites, uh, like leg mites that some goats get. If you don't want to use um, like an ivermectin, you can use a sulfur paste. It stinks really awful, but you can really slather it on there and it'll do the job. And then of course for goats, especially ringworm treatment, because goats somehow notoriously have ringworm as well. It seems like they get it about every year, every other year. Um, it's not a big deal, but you definitely don't, you want to treat it because if you're touching the goats, you're going to get it on you and you're going to end up with these big gross lesions on your face and hands and then people are going to think, mm, you know? So it's best to treat that. Um, as far as supplements go, I generally keep a loose trace mineral salt with my goats, uh, a general goat mineral. I will have kelp out oftentimes because they really will gobble that stuff down. It's like the... It's the mineral of the sea versus like alfalfa, which is more the mineral of the of the earth. Uh, another thing we keep out for our goats is uh, uh, baking soda. That way they can kind of monitor their own pH in their you know digestive tract. It works good for goats that are starting to feel a little bloaty. Um, Epsom salts. I like to have Epsom salts around when they kid because it's high in magnesium and it can kind of help you know boost their magnesium stores. It works good with calcium, uh, molasses is good when they kid as well. It gets a little bit of like uh, high energy into them right after they have their babies. They'll usually drink a nice big bucket of hot molasses water. And uh, that kind of helps, I think, just kind of get them through the next few hours as far as energy needs. And then the last thing we use on our goats pretty frequently would be copper boluses. We use Coppershire and I actually use the 12.5 gram uh, boluses and I give that twice a year. We are in a copper deficient area, so that's an important uh, supplement to use. You need to make sure where you live that that's a problem for you. Otherwise, don't use copper boluses. It's only when you need it should you use it. I also keep around bloat treatment, you know, just like the little um, container. Where's my hands? The little container of bloat treatment just in case a goat's bloaty. You can always, you know, douse them with that. And it's a kind of a, I think it's like a surfactant. Maybe it breaks the bubbles for a frothy bloat down so the goat can actually burp up the air versus trying to burp up a froth. It's just almost impossible. And then last but not least, probiotics. We use a lot of probiotics on our farm. Anytime an animal even looks cross-eyed at me, I put a you know, good dose of probiotics into them because I figure it can't hurt at all and it can only help. Even if the goat's just feeling a little off, you know, if their rumen's working good, it'll almost always, the rumen can bring them back from the brink of death. But when their rumen shuts down, you're in a big world of hurt now. Um, the last thing that I would have just on a regular goat farm would be a recovery pen or a hut, something that you can put the goat in where it's still kind of with its herd, but that it's not getting beat up, stepped on, climbed on, you know, pushed out of the way. It can have its own source of food and water and grain if, you, if you're doing grain um, so that they can, you know, worry about their health and not worry about, you know, staying out of everybody else's way. Now, if you raise goats and you breed them and you kid, of course, you're going to need neo neonatal supplies as well. And then those would include for me would be like a tube feeder so I can tube feed sick or weak kids. 
uh, bottles and nipples once they are have a suckle reflex if they aren't the mom doesn't want them or something i can always bottle raise them uh, bosi which is a selenium um, supplement we're selenium deficient where i live so we generally give our does sel uh, selenium before they kid and then sometimes if i see a kid that looks kind of spindly and its legs are kind of bent funny or just seems kind of i don't know weak like it wants to flop over on its side i'll give them a quarter cc of bosi as well and then of course towels those kind of things you can look online for kidding kidding supplies and get a better you know a better idea of what you should have on hand but that's generally the most important ones that I have because, you know, that seems to cover all the bases for what we generally have with our goats. So I hope this helped. Uh, I'll do another one of these. We'll cover cattle, hogs, and dogs probably, you know, just because I have a lot of 4-H kids and we raise a lot of dogs and stuff. So um, hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, you know, wait and check out my next one. Talk to you later. Bye.